Hello everyone and welcome to a short video on the Welch Bartlett method for power spectral density estimation. We start first with a brief discussion of the periodogram. So the periodogram is a simple spectral estimator. It takes a segment of data, here indicated by the red rectangle, um, and um, then the spectral estimate for that data is just the magnitude squared of the Fourier transform of that data segment. We can think of the periodogram as selecting the segment of data by multiplying the data by a rectangular window, hence the red rectangle here. And then we just take the FFT of that data segment and look at um, the magnitude squared of it. So here's the results that we would get if we did that with this data set. So this is an example of a periodogram for that first data segment. Um, and this is the result we get. If we take another block of data from the same data set, um, then we get that periodogram. And if we take a third block of data from the da same data set, we get this periodogram. And what you notice from this plot to this plot to this plot is that the periodograms vary quite substantially from one block to the next. And it's very hard to interpret the results, meaning it's hard to figure out what the underlying true spectrum is for, um, for this particular example. So the solution to this problem with high variance is to reduce that variance by averaging, and that's what Welch and Bartlett suggest that we do. So the Welch-Bartlett approach splits the data into a series of blocks. Here I've indicated these blocks by these red windows. Um, and then it averages the spectra for each block. Now I've shown here uh, the use of a non-rectangular window. So this is a tapered window. I think it's a Blackman window. Um, so it's tapered, it goes to zero towards the edges. We know that if the blocks don't overlap, then the spectral estimate for each block is independent, and averaging L blocks will reduce the variance of that estimate by a factor of L. The Harris paper from Proceedings of the IEEE in 1982 says that if we're using tapered windows, such as the Blackman window, and we do 50% overlap, meaning that this window overlaps 50% with the next window, um, that we will still get approximately independent spectra, so that the variance will still be reduced by approximately a factor of L if we average L blocks. And that's because you can see that the data right in here is not really included in this window because it's multiplied by zero, but it is highly included in this second window. So let's see what Welch Bartlett would do and compare it to the periodogram. So this is the estimated Welch Bartlett spectrum for the same data set, and here's the periodogram. So the periodogram had very high variance. These values change dramatically from realization to realization, whereas the Welch Bartlett spectrum has a much, much lower variance. This is much smoother. Now, in addition to lowering the variance, Welch Bartlett does allow for use of these non rectangular windows, like the Blackman window, and that has some advantages because it lowers the side lobe leakage. And we'll see that as we discuss how to interpret um, these windowed transforms as the output of a filter bank. So, there's another video on YouTube about how to interpret. Um, windowed transforms. So if you haven't already watched that, you should go, you should pause this video and go and watch that. Okay, hopefully you're back from watching that other video. In that video, we showed that the windowed transform is like a bank of bandpass filters. So that means that we have our data going in and the output at each Fourier transform bin um, looks like it's basically the output of a bandpass filter where the characteristics of that bandpass filter are determined by the window w of n. It's really w of minus n, but since all the windows we're using are symmetric, that, that time flip doesn't really matter. And so it's a bandpass filter um, because we're modulating the filter, modulating the coefficients, w of minus n, by e to the j omega kn. And that shifts it um, so that it's centered around omega k, which is the frequency of the, of the um, Fourier transform bin. Now, typical filter frequency responses for the windowed transforms that we're using, we often use the rectangular window. That was the first window I suggested, and that's 
the filter frequency response for that is shown in blue. I'm assuming that the, the frequency is zero, right? So it's centered around zero. It passes the stuff around zero and then tends to attenuate things outside of zero. But these, this window has pretty high side lobes, so the attenuation outside this narrow band pass, narrow band of frequencies you're passing, is not um, very large in places. Um, the highest side lobe here is minus 13 dB. If we use a Blackman window instead, that we get the red curve here, and you see we have much, much lower side lobes. So this band pass filter will tend to reject everything out here um, much more than the rectangular window does. Um, but the disadvantage is that the Blackman window for the same length window will have a much wider main lobe. So it will be sort of, uh, it'll be passing a wider band of frequencies. Okay, so we can get a lot of insight um, into how a window transform works by thinking about these filter frequency responses. And one key example I'll show you on the next slide. So the filter characteristics effectively determine how much signal energy from one frequency will leak over into another. So suppose we're looking at the frequency bin that's centered around 3 quarters pi. Okay, So we've got the filters designed so that they're steered with the center frequency of the filter to 3 quarter pi. And all we've done is, is shift the frequency responses shown on the previous page. And Suppose that the, the frequency spectra of the signal that we're, we're looking at, the underlying signal, looks like that. And so this frequency spectrum has very large, it, we can see that there's a lot of power in the signal around zero, and really these peaks at like plus and minus pi over 10. Um, and then, they, then it falls off. Now, out here at 3 quarter pi, Okay, we should be getting a relatively low level. The problem will be that for the rectangular window, this side lobe is still pretty high here. And um, this signal is going to leak through that side lobe, right? The, the amplitude of the resulting signal will be, this is on a dB scale, it'll be 20 dB minus the side lobe level, which is at about minus 35. Um, so, um, that will be like down to minus 15 dB. Um, so we can get some energy, whereas this level here is only going to be at uh, my around minus 35 dB. So the, the energy leaking through here, um, through this rectangular window filter, may be as loud as what's coming in in the, the main beam of the filter. Now, the Blackman window will do a much better job because the Blackman window will attenuate the signal energy at these frequencies far more, right? It'll take it down by a sub substantial amount, right? This is a side lobe down by minus 100 dB, so it'll be down 100 dB. Um, so the side lobe leakage will not be anywhere near as big a problem for the Blackman window as it is for the rectangular window. So um, that is one very useful way in which we can use our filter bank idea to get an idea of what's going to be the output of um, a windowed Fourier transform. Okay, so we'll end this video here and it'll pick it up with another video on a, an example for a second order system.